This is a tank that I use to face tag every mechanic in the new Uber boss fights so you don't have to. This video is a short summary of most important changes I noticed compared to the normal version of these fights. All the full length videos are uploaded to my channel. Besides the very high ES and recovery, the build doesn't have much mitigation, so you can easily see how much damage certain abilities deal. I did all fights with no mods on the invitations and without Maven Witness. First of the Shaper, from the start has two clones, the yellow balls have two additional projectiles and the slam attack is faster. The DGEM balls and the circles on the ground stay throughout all the phases. In the bullet hell phase Zana doesn't help you anymore, although the projectile count is lower, especially in the first phase, and the odd phases were completely removed. The Shaper fires 3 projectiles and the slam animation is faster in the Uba Uba Elder fight as well. The Shaper creates a bullet hell which is shorter but has even more projectiles than in the Shaper fight with also no protective save zone. The Elder places 3 circles that trigger shortly after each other. The overall speed and damage seems to be higher, although it is hard for me to tell exactly. The Cirrus encounter has 6 phases. The first 5 phases are very similar. A small cloud can spawn that is chasing you, the meteor attack duration is significantly shorter, and during the corridor and meteor attacks the small cloud disappears. In the last phase, Everlasting Fire has 6 beams. The ground digen that disables life and ES recovery stacks up quickly up to a certain point, covering like 80% of the center of the arena and Cirrus will stay on top of that. In the meteor phase he will drag you back into the digen so you are forced to run through them. The Searing Exarch also has overall higher damage, especially on Annihilation. The Ball phase starts with full intensity. Each of these phases spawn a Molten Minotaur, which only has basic attacks, but they stay and stack up until you kill them. The Incineration Explosion is harder to tank, the center still deals more damage. Towards the end, there are more debuffs on the ground. The Eater of Birds small tentacle attack has more tentacles. It has one shot potential if you stand in the center. During the Sphere phase, there are most tentacles slamming the same spot in the center, and you get debuffed if you stand in the charging beam. The slam attack has much more damage, the Sikam beam has multiple hits, overall higher damage as well. In the Maven encounter the degen effects stay on the ground throughout all the phases, so pay attention where you place them. The standstill attack also applies the debuff that disables recovery. The Cascade of Pain attack fires 3 projectiles which always has a wider spread. The Take This attack fires 5 projectiles with higher damage. Besides the Brain phase, 2nd and 3rd phases also spawn bosses. The bosses spawn during either the Brain or the middle phases will always be from the same selection. The Memory Game Explosion probably deals the same amount of damage. I was able to tank consistently with flasks and immortal core, but I don't recommend trying it unless you know your build can tank it. In the last phase bosses don't spawn anymore. It's just the usual beams, memory games and ground digens, but a lot of them. In the Cortex encounter, the biggest change is fighting multiple bosses at once. The rest I'm not familiar enough with to compare. I don't recommend this build for the new bosses. It is a respect PvP tank build on Standard League with many legacy items. 
Look up bossing builds on YouTube instead, optimized for 10 league players. My damage is very low, 1 to 1.5 million effective DPS. I would say that is the bare minimum to even attempt these bosses, but that number is easily surpassable even in fresh leagues.